Father God, we thank you now. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you for another privilege, another honor, another opportunity to come before you. Lord, we praise you for being good, being God. We thank you for all that you are doing and what you will do. We pray that you bless us tonight, Father God, as we dive into your word, that your word will speak to us and be a blessing. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank God. We had to go ahead and start a second uh, stream because we couldn't hear the first one. I realized that I couldn't hear it, and I figured you couldn't hear it. So if you would, jump off that stream and jump on the other one, and, and we will be going on about our business to do what the Lord has called us to do. Amen? So whatever you do, go ahead and, and jump on the live stream that's showing right now. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us here at the New Beginning Church for Bible study again. We're looking at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 8 through 11 tonight. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 8 through 11 is where we are again tonight. Technology just won't cooperate sometimes, so God has to do it his way. Amen. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 8 through 11. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 8 through 11. When you found it, you will discover verse number eight saying these words. But let us who are of a point, let us who are of the day be sober, keeping on the breast, the breastplate of faith and love in as a helmet of hope of salvation. For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Therefore, comfort each other and edify one another, 
just as you also are doing. The Apostle Paul is still talking to us tonight. We're in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 8 uh, through 11. The Apostle Paul said to us on last week, uh, through Brother Miles, that we ought to always be conscious of our actions. And he says that men have created their own awareness, according to Romans uh, chapter 1. So we pick back up where we were two weeks ago, when the Apostle Paul had closed out chapter 4 of First Thessalonians, where he talks about the coming of Jesus Christ. And this coming of Jesus Christ will be one where he will stop in midair. The dead in Christ shall rise first, and those who remain will be caught up with him in midair. He says that we will not prevent, King James says, will not prevent. Uh, this word prevent in the original Greek text simply means we will not proceed. We will not go before those who are asleep in Christ, those who are dead, those who are no longer alive. So if we believe the story, and we believe that this story is the story that will get us from earth to glory. If we believe the story that Jesus died for our sins, was buried in a borrowed tomb, rose early that third day morning, the Bible says if we believe this story, we will be born again. We will be caught up. We'll be raptured one day. He says, I don't want you to be ill-informed. I don't want you to be uninformed. I don't want you to be misinformed. I want you to not be ignorant, brethren. He says, those who died in Christ will rise again. That's good news. He says, at the trump of God, at the voice of the archangel, the dead in Christ shall rise first, and those of us who remain will be caught up with him together in mid-air. That's how he closes out uh, chapter 4. And he says, comfort one another with these words. He comes into chapter 5 talking about the day of the Lord. And he deals with the fact that the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. When men will holler peace and safety. And they will believe that they are safe and they have peace. At that moment, at that moment, Jesus Christ will come. And he parallels this story to a woman going through labor pain. These pains hit hard. These pains hit unannounced. These pains take place without any announcement that they're coming. This is how the Son of Man will come. He says to those of us who are Christians, we are sons and daughters of the light, and we are sons and daughters of the day. We do not abide in darkness. We do not structure our lives around the dark. So he comes to verse number six and verse number seven, and he says to us, let us watch and be sober. Let us watch and be sober. The word being sober, this phrase being sober has two connotations here. Number one, he talks about being sober, sober as not to be drunken with wine. He says, do not be caught up being drunken. Do not caught, be caught in drunkenness. Do not be drunk with wine. The second thing that this phrase sober means, it means to be alert, to always be watchful, always be thinking. We have to get to a point in our lives where we as Christians don't let everything go along, go, go on around us. We put our heads in the sand and think the world is going to keep on moving for our good. We have to be wise. We have to be watchful. We have to watch day and night for what is coming. That's why the preacher in the days of old was called a watchman on the wall. He is looking out for the people. And even today, whether you like the preacher or not, the preacher is looking out for you. Yes. He is the watchman on the wall. You see, some have gotten it really messed up. Some have gotten it twisted. Some don't understand that there's a place on planet Earth for the preacher. There's a place in ministry. There's a place in ministry for the man of God. 
what you have to understand is it is the man of God who welcomes a baby to the earth when he blesses him. It is the man of God who holds the baby, who, who blesses the baby, who asks God to protect this baby. It is the man of God who does it. And not only that, it is the man of God who speaks the last word. He speaks the last words over the dead. You see, the, even the undertaker can't speak the words unless he, he referred to the pastor or referred to the preacher to give him an opportunity to thank the family for using their services. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying to you today is, make sure you understand that we as Christians are children of the light and not children of the day. You see, children of the light don't, don't get involved in insurrections. There have been too many insurrections in churches. There have been too many fights in churches. There have been too many turning off of pastors in churches. The problem with it is those who are turning the pastor off, those who are turning musicians off, those who are turning those off who are administrators in the church, they are caught up in more sin than those that they are getting rid of. So we have to govern ourselves. Paul says we have to govern ourselves as children of the light, yes. children of the day. We have to have a, a right understanding. And then verse number seven says, for those who sleep, they sleep at night. Mm -hmm. Those who sleep, sleep at night. And those who get drunk, get drunk at night. I know you can get drunk in the daytime. I know you can drink during the daytime, but a night drunk just, just sets it off. Mm -hmm. a, a night drunk is just like none other. The Bible says that we ought not be given to drunkenness. Yeah. Paul talks about this word sober. Not only is he talking about don't drink strong drink, as Paul advises Timothy, as, as Timothy's parents advises him that, that, small, small, that strong drink is given to those who wish to perish. But he says to us, not only avoid strong drink, also avoid the worldliness of this world. Mm -hmm. Don't get like them. Don't act like them. He says, in other words, what you need to do is be sober. The word sober means to be alert. Because there are some who are spiritually asleep. You, not, you need to be spiritually awake. You ought to be alert. Christians must be prepared not only to go to heaven, but to live saved, righteous lives even down here. Christians have to understand that sooner or later we're going to be judged. Yes. And we're going to be judged by the great high judge, God himself. So Paul tells us to make sure that we carry, it, carry ourselves as children of light. Mm -hmm. Daddy always got it right. He said, when you walk out that door, remember, you are a Davis. I have a good name in this neighborhood. I have a good name in this state. When you get back here, I want you to have a good name, and I want my name to be good. Yeah. He reminded us on a regular basis you are not a Williams. You are, are not a Jones. You are a Davis. And Davis carries himself a certain way. Yes. So I'm reminding you tonight. You are a Christian. Yes, sir. You are a Christian. You are Christ-like. And you got to carry yourself in alertness. Yes. Carry yourself in a certain way. Have a certain demeanor about yourself. When folks say things about you, somebody ought to stand up and raise their hand and say, I don't know him that way. I don't know her that way. You ought to have a, a, a character that people can stand up for and vouch for. Verse number eight, Paul says, let us who are of the day be sober. Those of us who are of the light, we got to be sober. We, we got to be aware of what's going on. Putting on the breastplate of faith. Putting on the breastplate of faith. Paul talks about this in Ephesians chapter 6 when he talks about putting on the whole arm of God. We ought to have a breastplate of faith. 
It is the breastplate of faith. It is faith that, that stops the fight that stops the fiery darts that the devil is shooting at us. It is a symbol that our faith is the only thing that can keep us moving forward. Amen. In war, in battle, there's a breastplate that covers the innermost being of a person, the most vital areas of a person's body. The breastplate covers it. And Paul says to us today, if we're going to have on the, bless, the breastplate, we got to have faith. Yes. Faith is something that you can visualize that you can't see. Faith is that God will deliver when the deliverers have gone out the door. Faith is that God will come through just like he said he would. Yes, God. We got to have faith in the Lord. And as we have faith in the Lord, we ought to also have love. This love that comes from God. This love that only Christians can enjoy. It's a, a putting up with love. It is a love that, that tells us that we can make it regardless. Mm -hmm. It is a love that we have for our enemies. And let me tell you, it takes love, show enough love, sure enough love. It takes love to love your enemies. Yes. And let me tell you, if you ever tried to love an enemy, you ought, to, you ought to get to a point in your life where you pray for them. And I'm not talking about pray, Lord, kill them off like David. David prayed many times. Lord, kill them off. Lord, shut them down. Lord, stop them from bothering me. When you pray for your enemies, you ought to pray for your enemies by saying, God, bless their children. Bless their finances. Bless their health. That's what love is. And he says, and as a helmet, as a helmet of protection in this battle. We are a spiritual warfare. And we ought to have on a helmet of protection. And that only helmet that can protect us is salvation. Mm -hmm. He says, as a helmet, the hope of salvation. This word hope is translated confidence. I have so much confidence in my salvation. There is nothing that anybody can ever tell me that will make me turn my steps away from God. Yes. There's nothing anybody can convince me of that can turn me away from Jesus Christ. There's nothing anybody can do now. The devil should have killed me while he had me. But let me just share with you tonight. I have the confidence in my salvation that when I get out of here, when I die, when I leave earth, I'm going to be in the presence of the Lord. Do you have that hope? Do you have that confidence? Will you be the one that God is, has blessed to stand flat-footed and say, I don't care what the Muslims do. I don't care what those who worship Baal do. I'm going to put my trust in Jesus Christ. And because I've trusted in him, I have the confidence that this salvation is an everlasting salvation. That's why we have to get to a point in our lives where we realize that once we're saved, we're saved. <laughs> once we're saved, we're always saved. There is no reconversion. There's no re-salvation. There's no reconversion. There's rededication. Because what we do is we fall out with God. We fall out with our evil ways. And what we have to understand is when we fall out with God, and we get caught in our evil ways, we need to fall out with our evil ways. When we fall out with God, we get caught in our evil ways, we break fellowship with God. Christians break fellowship with him. Look at what it says. He says, we ought to have the hope in salvation. This salvation that we have, nothing can take it away. Paul gets, gets to preaching one day in Acts in, in Romans chapter 8, he says, Now what can separate me from the love of God? Death can't separate yes. me. The enemy can't separate me. Height can't separate me. Depth can't separate me. In other words, he, salvation is so deep we can't go under it. Salvation is so high we can't go over it. Salvation is so wide we can't go around it. There's nothing that can separate us from the love of God. He loves us so much. Amen. 
many of you won't be able to, to hear the story that Sister Davis told, so let me tell it my own way. You know, I hear stuff and I, I rearrange it my own way. She talks about the fact that a woman met another a woman one day who was a real estate agent. And that real estate agent would ask the question, how do you know how valuable a house is? How do you know that a house is worth what you're selling it for? How do you know? The real estate agent says it's, 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 it's not the house that you're looking at determines, that determines the value. It's what someone would pay for it. I want to tell you today, over 2,000 years ago, Jesus paid for us. Yes, he did. He paid for us. Jesus paid for us over 2,000 years ago. We were valuable to him. Jesus paid the price. He died for us on an old rugged cross. For God did not appoint us to wrath. He did not create wrath for us. He, he created wrath for those who would not follow him. But to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, God has set us up to obtain salvation through Jesus Christ. Your salvation did not come because you've been good. Your salvation did not come because your faith is so strong. Your salvation did not come because of anything you have done. Your salvation came and it will always come only through what Jesus has done on Calvary. Jesus has done on Calvary. Jesus Christ has died for us on Calvary. And because of his death, burial, and resurrection, guess what? Jesus Christ thought we were worthy. Even though we were unworthy, he thought we would be valuable enough for him to die for us. Look at what it says. But to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Yeah. In other words, whether we die now or live now, Jesus died for us. So much so, until we don't have to worry about being awake or asleep, Jesus Christ has died for us. He deemed us valuable. That's right. Your friends may not think you're valuable, but Jesus has deemed you valuable. You are valuable to him. We should live together with him. It doesn't matter if we live or we die. Jesus have, have paid the ultimate cost for us. He paid the price with his very own life. Then he says to us, therefore comfort each other and edify each other or one another, just as you also are doing. Paul commends this church at Thessalonica. He says, you've been edifying each other. You've been building each other up. The word edify, the word edify means to build up, comes from the same word we get the word akadome or okidome or okidome. It means to build one another up. It means to encourage each other. It means to comfort one another by building each other up in the Lord. Then he commends them and he says, just as you also are doing. The church ought to be building each other up. We ought to be building up people. We ought to be building up each other. We ought to be strengthening each other. We ought to be living for each other. And building each other up and pumping each other up and supporting each other and not tearing each other down. Paul says, let us who are in the day, of the day, walking in the day, be sober, be, be wise, be, be always on the alert. Whatever you do, put on the breastplate, the breastplate mm -hmm. of faith. Amen. Whatever you do, get to a point in your life, just things, 
Get to a point, plug that up for me, please. Get to a point up in your life where you can build people up and walk in faith. You can build them up, walk in faith, build them up, strengthen them. And while you're walking in faith, you know you ought to walk in faith enough that God can bless you as you are moving toward blessing others. Edify each other. Edify each other in the Lord. Edify each other. Build them up. Strengthen them. That's why we pray, Lord, build us up. Lord, build us up where we're torn down. Build us up where we're falling apart. We ought to build each other up where we're torn down, where we're falling apart. Build up each other. We're Christians. We're different. We're not winos. Winos look out for each other. But we're Christians. We ought to build each other up. We ought to live in love. Look at what he says. He, ought, he says live in love. Love people. I'm so glad to be born and reared in the hospitality state because I know what it's like to love people. And you don't love people just because they're your friends. You don't love people just because they love you. You don't love people just because they treat you right. You love people because God has commanded us to, and we look forward to loving all mankind. Show them love. It says, put on the helmet of salvation. This helmet that you wear is for protection. It's a terrible thing to see somebody riding a motorcycle with no helmet. There's no protection. You see, you're going to have trouble. If you ride, you're going to have trouble. In the middle of riding my bike one day, a woman was on her phone. And I'm riding. And, and she, the light had turned red a long time. And she comes straight across into the crosswalk, walk, looking down at her phone. I'm so glad. I'm so glad that, that God was able to keep me. And I'm also glad that I had my helmet on. For Christians, we have confidence in the helmet of salvation. We as Christians have confidence in the hope of salvation. For God did not appoint us to wrath. God didn't call us to drama. Songwriter says, no more drama, no more drama. God has not called, called us to wrath. He has not called us to to be disrespectful to each other. And he has not appointed us. When he says us, he means believers. He has not appointed, appointed us to wrath. He has not taken a day and set aside a day for, for the wrath of God to fall upon us because we have a great testimony that one of these days Jesus will crack the sky and the dead in Christ shall rise. Those who live will be caught up in midair if they believe the story of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. He says, he's not called us to wrath. He's not called us, caused us to destruction. In other words, he has not called us to hell. He's called us to salvation through Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. He says that he died for us. That whether we are asleep or whether we are awake, Jesus died for us. Whether we are asleep or whether we are awake, that, that we should live together with him. Amen. Comfort each other. Edify one another. Build up each other. Just as you've been doing. What he's saying is, as I say to the church, whatever you do, keep doing what you're doing if you've been doing the building, if you've been doing the edifying, if you've been doing the academy to build each other up, to strengthen each other, not tear them down, but to strengthen them. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. You need to get to know Jesus in the departing of your sins. You need to trust him. And if you have trust him, Paul says to us tonight, live like it. 
operate like it. Because Jesus has blessed you. He has kept you. He has walked with you. Continue to walk with him. Continue to, to act like you're children of the day. Children of the light. You don't get involved in drama like other folks do. Says to us, show forth love. Be strengthened in your faith. Our faith will stop the fiery darts of the devil. Our love will shut the devil down. It's love and faith is a bless a breastplate. Because we trust in the helmet. The helmet, the hope of salvation. If you're listening to me today and you never trusted Jesus as your Savior. This is your moment. This is a good opportunity for you to trust Jesus. All you have to do is just believe the story that over 2,000 years ago, Jesus died for you. Mean men killed him. He died for you. Jesus of Christ took his own tree and marched up a hill called Calvary. They nailed them tight. They gave his back to the nails, the back to the cross, rather. His hand, his wrist to the nail, his feet to the rivets. He died on a stick. He died a horrible death just for you. They took him off that cross that day. They laid Jesus in a borrowed tomb. You can just believe the story. They laid him in a borrowed tomb. It was borrowed tomb because it didn't need it very long. Because after they laid him in the borrowed tomb, early that third day morning, he rose with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. The door of the church is open. If you can just believe this simple little story, that Jesus died, he was buried, he rose and he was seen. You can get to know him tonight. I beg of you to get to know him. And you will qualify to go to heaven. Because right now, we none of us are qualified. But Jesus has made us right. And because Jesus has made us right, we can go to heaven if we trust him. Is that you today? If that's you, bow your head with me and Invite him in. Ask Jesus to come into your life and make you a new person. Ask Jesus Christ to, to be a part of your life and you can be a part of, of what Jesus is doing. Just repeat after me. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. We believe that if you honestly prayed this prayer, believing the story that Jesus died and rose again, we believe that you are now born again. We believe that if you die today or 10 years or 25 years from now, we believe that you're going to heaven. There may be others of you who are saved and know that you are. You've committed your life to Jesus Christ already. But as Paul says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, we need to walk the walk, talk the talk, live the life. And you're struggling right now with living the life. You struggle with sin just like I do. Just like other Christians do. I say to you tonight, let me pray with you and pray for you. Matter of fact, let me pray for us as we struggle. When we struggle with sin, when we struggle with temptation, it's not always drug addicts and prostitutes and homosexuality, lesbian activity. We all struggle with something. And for the church, the Christian church, many times, 
It's just bad attitudes. You may us. We know that you are the deliverer. You're the one who keeps us. God, we come confessing our sins. We've fallen short. We messed up. We ask you to forgive us. Now bless us, Lord, to be about your business. We rededicate, we recommit, we repent. We pray that you keep us now. Give us the strength, give us the hope. Give us the ability to move forward in your name. And bless us, Father God, to make you proud of us. Bless us to walk in faith. Bless us to walk in love. Bless us tonight, Father God, that we will maintain the hope that salvation in Jesus Christ is good enough. That we don't need to try anything or anybody else, but salvation in Jesus Christ is good enough. It's in Jesus' name we pray and we ask it all. Amen and thank God. Thank you so much for joining us study here tonight. Thank you for being a part of our service. If you want to give to the New Beginning Church for the ongoing of this ministry, you can do so in two ways. Number one, you can give by mailing your offering or your tithes in to New Beginning Church, P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. That's New Beginning Church, P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. If you can do so in Zale, with Zell, you can send your offering, your tithes, your love offering, your, your sacrificial gifts by way of Zell to lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. The idea here is as we lift Jesus, Jesus draw all men unto himself. Our Zell account, lifting. Dot Jesus at yahoo.com. Thank you so much for joining us, for being a part of our service. Our prayer list is extensive. Our prayer list is long. And we need to be praying for others as we depart from this place. We want to pray for Isabella Cantu. Isabella Cantu. Isabella Cantu, who was very sick. She is an eight-month-year-old baby. We want to lift her in prayer. We want to pray for Cheryl York for her health. Pray for Walter and Eloise Johnson for their health. We'll pray for Vivian Oslaha for her health. We want to pray for J.R. and Lula Richard for their help that God will continue to strengthen them and bless them. We're praying for is this Alex? Alex Alais. Want to pray. Pray for their, their four-year-old that needs surgery. We want to pray for the Alexis family. Alanis family, the Alanis family. We'll pray for Shirley Bentley. We'll pray for Bertie Bowdry. And we're still praying for Sister Ann Paul, who has returned to church. We're lifting these before the Lord. We're at the New Beginning Church. We're uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus says, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. John 12 and 32. Father God, we thank you now. We bless your name. We pray for these who we have called out. We pray that you bless them, strengthen them, Bless their minds, their hearts. Bless them to turn to you. Bless them to know that you're the great physician. You're the one who heals us. You're the one who keeps us. Lord, we're depending on you. We trust you to heal 
every problem, every pain. We ask you, Father God, to bless every family. Bless everybody who will listen, who have listened. Bless, Father God, as only you can. Bless our nation, as separated as we are. In the name of Jesus, we ask you to step in and do the great things that you do. Lord, we thank you for your word. We ask you to bless your word. Bless Christians to know that we must walk in love. Bless us to realize that we must maintain faith. Bless us to know that our only hope is our salvation, and it is our protection. It is our helmet. Look, God, remind us that it's Jesus and Jesus alone who can keep us, who can save us, who continue to walk with us. And Lord, bless us to comfort one another with these words, that Jesus Christ is coming back again. Bless us, Father God, that we will continue to do what you called us to do. And that is to edify the body of Christ and glorify God. And Lord, we ask you to keep the glory. All the honor and all the praise allow us to be beneficiaries of your many blessings. It's in the strong, mighty, powerful, anointed name of Jesus Christ we pray. And we ask it all. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling. Unto him the only wise and only true God. Unto him be power, glory, and dominion. Until we meet again, let us sing together. Amen. Amen. And amen. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer.